Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I would like to continue talking about logarithms. Uh, the previous lecture was kind of introductory, so I defined what logarithm is about, and I will start from a very short um, summary of whatever we talked about in the previous lecture. So, first of all, logarithmic function is an inverse to uh, an exponential function. So, you have exponential function. Now, logarithmic function is an inverse, which means that knowing the value of the function, we can find the argument. So, so what is this? This is an exponent, which if I will use with the base a, I will get uh, the argument. So this is basically a definition of what is uh, logarithm of x with the base a. It's the number which is which, if used as an exponent with the base a, will give an argument x. So this is the definition. Now um, we also know that this function. The exponential function is monotonic, and it's increasing. It's increasing if a is greater than one, and decreasing if a is less than one, greater than zero. By the way, I didn't mention it before, but everywhere we assume that a is greater than zero. All right. So knowing the monotonicity, the monotonic character of the uh, exponential function, we can basically state exactly the same about the inverse function. Um, I don't remember how much attention it was given in the general theory of functions wherever I just introduced the monotonicity, but uh, let me just very briefly make a, um, a short proof that if the original function is monotonically increasing, then the inverse function is also monotonically increasing. Okay, here's how uh, to prove it in a general case. So let's say you have a function which is monotonically increasing. Now, the function is inverse. Inverse to this one which means if I will use g and use this as an argument, I will, I will get this as a function value. All right, so how can I prove that this function is also monotonically increasing? Well, very simple. Let's take two different arguments, u and v, which are related to this inequality. And I would like to prove that the corresponding value of the functions are also in the same relationship. That's what I have to prove, right? All right, how can I do it? Here's how. Uh, let's say this is equal to p and this is equal to q. Since g is inverse of f, if p is equal to g of u, then u is equal to f of p, right? This is inverse function to this one. So if I will use, um, instead of an argument, I, I use the function, I, I, will, I will have the value of the ar argument. So that's basically the relationship. If p is equal to g of u, then u is equal to f of p. That's what means f and g are inverse to each other. Similarly, v is equal to, uh, sorry, f of q, right? Now, we know this relationship. So we know this. u is less than v. So f of p is less than f of q. Now, let me ask you now, what can be the relationship, knowing the f of, uh, f of x is monotonically increasing, what can be the relationship between P and Q? P 
can P be equal to Q? No, because then F of P would be equal to F of Q. Can P, um, can P be greater than Q? No, because again, since F of X is monotonically increasing, if P is greater than Q, then F of P would be greater than F of Q, which again is not true. So the only thing which we can say is P is less than Q. P, which is this, is less than Q, which is this. And that's what exactly needed to be proved. All right, so this is a general property. If um, the function is monotonically increasing, inverse function is also monotonically increasing. Obviously, the same thing for decreasing. I don't even want to prove it. It's kind of obvious how to do it. All right, so we will use exactly this property, general property of monotonic functions when addressing the logarithms. So we know now that logarithm x is increasing whenever the corresponding uh, exponential function is increasing and decreasing monotonically whenever the exponential function is uh, decreasing. So these are the properties of uh, the logarithm, logarithm x, the monotonicity and direction uh, increasing or decreasing depends on the base. All right, that's done. And now let's talk about certain properties of the logarithmic function. All right. So that's the function. And this is inverse to this function. Now, one of the things which we again can conclude from this being inverse to this, whatever is the domain in this function becomes the range of this function. And whatever is range of this function is domain to this function. So what's the domain for a to the power of x? Well, it's defined for all real x, which means that range of this function would be all real x. So uh, all, all real values. So y belongs to all real values. Now, the range of this function, if you remember, it's always positive. It's either increasing or decreasing. The graph looks like this. This is for a greater than 1. This is for a less than 1. But it's always positive. So the range of the function where the values are, it's always above the x. Uh, axis. So that would be um, the domain of this function. Okay, R plus means only positive real numbers. All right, so that we have defined. We have a domain, it's defined for any positive uh, number. And the result of the function can be, obviously, any real number. All right. Now, we still would like to mention these two restrictions for obvious reasons. Now, let's have a couple of examples. Now, what is a logarithm of 1 with any base, uh, which satisfies these conditions, of course, with any base A? Well, this is 0. Why? Let's again remember the definition of the logarithm. Logarithm is a number which is used as a, an exponent with a base a will give um, the argument. So let's check it out. If I will take a and put it in this particular uh, exponent, I should get 1, right? That's how we should verify it. Now, let's check it out. Zero. If I will put a to the power of zero, we, every, we all know from the theory of exponential function that any, any number uh, in the power of zero actually is equal to, to one. So that's true. So that's why log uh, of one with the base a is always equal to zero. Next. What is this? Again, it's supposed to be 
uh, an exponent which if used uh, with a base a will give a. So, well, obviously it's 1 because a to the first degree is equal to a. I'll put direct proof that this is 0. This is the check. Next, log a of 1 over a. Okay, what is this? What power should I use to get 1 over a? Well, obviously minus 1. So that's why it's equal to minus 1. Next, this is something which I have already um, proven in the previous lecture. Basically, what I have proven in the previous lecture was this. If x is equal to a, and we know that log a base a is equal to 1, then this is true. Like, for example, log 2 to the tenth degree base 2 is equal to 10, just as an example. Okay, these are all trivial things which are directly follow from... Um, from the definition of the logarithm. So that's why I don't really um, go into more details of this. I'm trying to very quickly put as much trivial stuff as possible. Next, log a 1 over x. Let's think about what is 1 over x. It's x to the power of minus 1, right? And considering the previous rule, which you were just mentioning, it would be log x, sorry, to the power minus 1, which is minus, remember this is delta, delta goes outside of the logarithms, minus log a. log x 1 over a. What if I have 1 over a in the base? Well, quite frankly, it's the same thing. Um, a x. Now, why? This actually needs maybe a little explanation. How can I prove that this is this. Well, basically I have to do this. I have to take the base, raise it into this power, and check if I get x, right? But now let's think about this way. This is minus. Um, minus is basically um, reverse. So this is 1 over a minus 1 log x a, right? Because subsequent raising into power is equivalent to multiplication. Minus 1 is multiplied by this. Now, what is 1 over a to the power minus 1? Minus 1 is reversing, so 1 over a, 1 over a is converted to a. So we get a log x a. And this is x by definition of log x, by the base a. Okay, that is done. Next. Okay. You remember from the previous lecture, I have proven that log 
of the product is equal to sum of logs. Now, how about division? How about log u over v? Well, let's think about it. u over v can always be represented as u times v to the power of minus 1, right? Now, this is a product, so I can convert it into sum. So it will be log u plus log of v to the minus 1 equals. And by the previously proven theorem, log of 1 over v, v to the power of minus 1, is minus log a v. So if we multiply, we add logarithms. If we divide, we subtract logarithms. U minus U logarithm, U minus logarithm. Now, this is an interesting thing. Log B with the base A times log C base B is equal to log C base A. In a way, it looks like it has nothing to do with this, but it looks like B over A times C over B is equal to C over A, right? When you can reduce it. It looks like this. I mean, it's good for memorization, but don't mix these two. Nothing can come. It's just for mnemonics. In any case, how can I prove that? Well, to prove that something logarithm uh, of, of C by the base B is actually this, I have to prove that if I raise A to this power, I will get C. Well, let's prove it. A to the power log B A times log C B. What is it equal to? Now, again, if you multiply two powers, it's basically a consecutive raising into power first into this one, a to the power log b a, and then to this one, log c b equals. Now, what is this? a to the power of log b base a. This is a definition of, logar of, of logarithms, uh, and it's supposed to be equal to b, right? Logarithm is the power, logarithm of b by the base a is the power which, if used as an exponent with a base a, will get b. So that's what b is. And we re retain log c b. Now, what is this? Exactly the same thing. By definition of logarithm c by the base b, this is supposed to be c. So that's why a to this power gives C. So that's why this is correct. Sorry. Oops. All right. Next. All right. This is just a nice consequence. Why? Well, let's just remember the previous one. Log B base A times log B of C is equal to log C B, right? That's what, uh, no, sorry, A. That was I have just proved before. Now, what if C is equal to A? A, B, and C can be anything, right? So I put A. So on the left, I have this. On the right, I have this, which is equal to 1, as we have already proven before. So that's why it's true. Now, 
for a greater than one the behavior of the logarithm function. Um, if x is greater than one, log x a greater than zero. If x equals to one, then log x is equal to zero. And if x may, and if x less than one, log x is less than zero. Now, why is that? Well, it's actually very simple um, result of applying the monotonicity function. Now, we know this, right? Logarithm of one is always equal to zero. Now, with a greater than zero, uh, greater than one, sorry, the function logarithm x is monotonically increasing, right? So if I increase x beyond the point one, go to greater than one, my value of the logarithm should increase, so it should be greater than zero. And on the opposite side, if I go uh, to, to the less than one area, then logarithm should also decrease, because the function logarithm x by the base a with a greater than one is monotonically increasing. So if I go from some point to the right, it's increasing, to the left, it's decreasing. Very similarly, if a is less than one, I have a um, similar story, but now it's decreasing, right? Because uh, the corresponding um, exponential function is decreasing. So inverse logarithmic is also decreasing. So if it's decreasing, then we should have this. We should have this. Again, at point x equals to 1, we know that logarithm is equal to 0. Now, if I move to the right, increasing value of the x, of the argument, the logarithm should decrease from 0 down, less than 0. And if I go to the left, decreasing the argument, considering that the function is monotonically decreasing, the function value should increase, so it goes up above 0. And that basically concludes the main properties of logarithms. Um, what we still have left is graph, and that's easy. Um, that would be next lecture. And then a certain number of problems which we will do together. Um, do register on the unisor.com if you would like really to get to the guts of it, because there are exams, and exams are very important. Um, you, you can take exam if you are a registered student, and I do recommend you to do this. Thank you very, thank you very much.